Howdy, AP Precal. It's Miss Cash. Um, these are my version of the notes for, um, I think this is section 313, but I forgot to look that up. But basically, we're going to begin polar. So um, we're going to begin plotting polar points and then talking about how that can be related to complex numbers also. Um, so basically, if you know the unit circle, polar is not so challenging. Um, because what we do with um, polar is that all of a sudden, um, it's the unit circle, but where our radius can change, okay? So when we, um, when we graph, let's see if I can show you that. When we, um, we have a polar grid that looks something like this, where each circle is a new radius, so we could label it like we have one, two, three, four, five, six, or whatever, um, and then we have the different angles. They tend to split this up into um, like the pi over 12 family. So like here would be one pi over 12, two pi over 12 is pi over six. So here's pi over six, here's pi over four, here's pi over three, and then we have, this would be five pi over 12. Um, we don't use the pi over 12 and 5 pi over 12 too often. We could. We know how to use it now that we've done the um, sum and difference identities, but we don't use it too much. Okay, so basically um, what we want to look at here is um, we, we have any random angle on our... Um, on our polar grid, okay? So some random theta, here's our x coordinate, here's our y coordinate, and now our radius is equal to r because we could move out to something else over here. So what we wanna do is we wanna talk about converting from rectangular to polar um, or polar to rectangular. So um, rectangular is what you've seen your whole life, okay? So when we talk about a rectangular coordinate, that's what we're looking at an x comma y. Okay, when we look at polar, polar coordinates are written as r comma theta. And to be honest with you, it's actually easier. It would have been easier if we decided to do theta comma r, um, because when I graph in terms of r comma theta, I always figure out the angle first and then find the radius. Um, but we don't do it that way. I don't know why. I don't. I didn't write that rule, so they forgot to consult me. <laughs> um, in any case, okay, so let's look at this. If I have r squared, I know I can use the Pythagorean theorem, and I know that r squared is going to be equal to x squared plus y squared. Okay, and theta, if I want this, I know that this is in, um, well, I can say that, that tangent of theta is equal to y over x, and so, therefore, theta is going to be arctan of y over x, except, well, okay, hang on, let's, let's write this down, arctan of y over x, um, or, I'm going to write down or, um, because this, if you remember from arctan, it will only give you angles in quadrants 1 or 4, okay? So, arctan of y over x only will give me quad angles in quadrant 1 or 4, so, therefore, if I want something in 2 or 3, I have to, let's say, Let's say arctan gave me an angle here. I don't know. I don't even know what that is. Um, but I wanted, okay, here's my train of thought, but I wanted an angle back here. So how, if I'm at this, say this is negative, that looks like negative pi over 3. But I actually wanted 2 pi over 3. What do I have to do? I have to add pi to get that way. Okay, so what we'll say here is arc, it could also equal arctan of y over x plus pi. Um, I think I saw in somebody else's notes that they made a, a rule as to when to use which one, but I would just say pay attention to what quadrant you're in. The arctan will only give you angles in quadrants one and four, which you should know. And then if you add pi, that will now put you in quadrant two or three. Okay. Um, and then polar to rectangular, um, that means you have r, you have theta, and you want to figure out um, x and y. Well, we know that... Um, uh, cosine of theta, can you see that? Yes, is equal to x over r, so therefore x itself would just be equal to r cosine theta. Okay, um, likewise, we can say that sine of theta is going to be y over r, and so y is equal to r sine theta. I don't know why I put that big of a gap there, but there you go. Um, on this one, you, you should see it's just a slight extension beyond what we've already known with the unit circle. Um, so what I like to do, okay, um, I think I didn't do the same order in my chart here and in this, but we're fine. Um, what I like to do is I like to, to think about the fact that we can write our polar coordinates where um, it's positive-positive. We can, we can change um, the 
Okay, I didn't like how I said that. Let me start again. Um, say I have the point four, five pi over three. Let's plot that point first, and then, um, and then see if we can write it other ways. Um, so if I come along, five pi over three is gonna be this line here, and we come out and we have to come a radius of one, two, three, I think this is four. Okay, so we went, we found this positive angle, we went all the way around to five pi over three, and then we came out a positive radius, one, two, three, four, and there we were. But the another thing that we could do is that we could come back here to two pi over three, and instead of going in the positive direction down, uh, away, you know, coming from the origin going out, or, you know, actually we call that the pole in polar, instead of going, um, in a positive direction from the pole, we could turn around and go a negative direction, and that would put us here, okay? So we can say this is a negative four comma two pi over three. If I had the angle two pi over three, that's this little dotted line, um, I got here this way, but I turn around, instead of going, moving up and positively or down that, that um, terminal side, I could turn around and go the opposite way, and that gives me, this lands me in that same spot. Okay, we can also do it where we have a positive radius but a negative angle. So that means I'm coming this way to get to the angle, and that's a negative pi over 3. And my radius is still positive, so it's a positive 4, negative pi over 3. And this is where sometimes I wish we wrote it the opposite way, where we would say theta r instead of r theta, but we don't. So just pay attention to that. It's r theta. Okay, now we want a negative and a negative. So that means I have to come out to my little dotted ray over here, okay, the dotted terminal side, and then turn around and go in the negative direction. So my negative r is going to be negative 4. And what I did to get here is I'm starting at 0 going in the negative direction, do, 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 and I, that's negative 4 pi over 3. Okay, and so there are three versions, three additional versions um, to that original polar coordinate. Um, so I like to make you practice and um, and convert between rectangular um, give give me a sketch and oh, actually we could we could figure out the rectangular for this one um, let's do that really fast um, so if this is um, four five pi over three I can either think of this as um, okay it was the point four five pi over three can you see what I'm doing yes you can um, I can either think okay well let's draw that five pi over three is coming down here I have a radius of four this angle is 5 pi over 3. If I am strong with my geometry, I might remember that this is a 60 degree angle, therefore this is the 30, therefore that's the 90. And so what we can do is we can say, well, opposite the 90 is twice as big as opposite the 30. This is 2, opposite the 60 is that root 2. Oh, but now we're going down, it's there. So the um, one way to think about this is that this has a rectangular coordinate, its x value is positive 2, and its y value is negative 2 root 3. Now, if you're not as strong with geometry, but you love pre-cal, as we all should, um, <laughs> okay, what we can do is we know that the x-coordinate is equal to r cosine theta, um, which would be 4 times cosine of 5 pi over 3. You know that cosine of 5 pi over 3 from the unit circle is a positive 1 half. That's 4 times a positive 1 half. That's equal to 2, which is what I wrote right here. Okay, um, we also could say, okay, well, y is r sine theta, which is 4 times sine of 5 pi over 3. Sine of 5 pi over 3 is a negative root 3 over 2, which gives me a negative 2 root 3, which I already wrote down because I know my 30, 60, 90 triangles. So there's no shame if you need to do this. Great. This is faster for me because I'm pretty good at 30, 60, 90 triangles. Um, yeah, either way, that gets us there. So basically, what was I doing? I was saying that the polar coordinates were 2, negative 2, root 3 for that particular problem. Okay, super. Um, on this one, this next one, let's see. Oh, we're nine minutes in. Let me finish. I'll do this chart, and then I'll start the next video after that. Okay, so on this one, I have negative 6, root 3, 6. So let's see. This is going to be negative 6, root 3, and then positive 6 is going to be somewhere up here. Is that what I put? I think I changed a worksheet. I don't know. Hopefully this is what, okay, I intended. Um, negative 6 root 3 and a positive 6. What I recognize is that this becomes, here's my little 30 degree angle, and then this 60 is going to be this number times root 3. Um, 
And then the 90 is twice as big as op what was opposite the 30, so that's six. And if you're like, Miss Kosh, what did you just do? Um, we can always do a Pythagorean theorem. Um, but this has a, a radius of 12, which doesn't fit on my sketch. I, I, anyway, let's, so let's call this radius two, let's call this four, let's call this six, let's call this eight, let's call this 10, let's call this 12. And then um, this we just said right in here was a 30 degree angle, which puts us on um, five pi over six. So we're right here. Oh my goodness. Okay. So the positive, it's a positive radius of 12 with a positive angle of five pi over six. Okay. Now we want to see how do I, what if I get to the angle in a negative direction? So this becomes, it's still a positive radius of 12. And now it's negative 7 pi over 6 for that one. Okay, the next one, I want to have a positive angle, but it needs to come down where this will make me turn around and go the other direction. Um, let's see if my eyes work only marginally today. Okay, so what did I do? I came all the way around. That was 11 pi over 6, and then I backed up and went in a negative. Did I put that in the right spot? I think so. Okay, um, so basically it's a negative 12 with a positive 11 pi over 6, and I'm writing too big to fit in my squares. Okay, this one would be, how did I get here in the negative direction? That's negative pi over 6 and then negative 12. Well, once again, negative 12, negative pi over 6, the r comes first, even though it's more natural for us to do theta first. So, Hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully you see the connections between what we've already been doing. And I will promise, I, as promised, I will come back for the next video. Subscribe, all the fun things. Comment below if you found that helpful.